So, um, hello, this is Joel Salatin, and uh, welcome, thanks for talking to us today on uh, International Permaculture Day. This is Mike Grenville from Transition Forest Row. And, uh, Joel, you're a, a farmer, and um, I saw a video of you s saying that you were a, a, you described yourself as a caretaker of creation. And um, I've seen you in a, a number of films, including uh, the very famous uh, Food Inc., which uh, was shown all over the place. And um, an article I read about you in uh, Time magazine just um, uh, a few months ago was very evocative. It just evoked the, the spirit of America, I think, which is this land is your land, and uh, saying that you wanted to lead America back to the farm. So what got you interested in farming, Joel, and, uh, and what's your connection to permaculture? Well, I, I've been interested in farming ever since I can remember. I'm second generation here on, on our farm. My my dad and mom were farmers. My uh, grandfather always aspired to be a farmer. He had a large garden. But uh, from my earliest childhood memories, you know, I had I had uh, laying chickens as a as a project throughout my teen years. Sold eggs, had a garden, and sold it on the the curve market, which is the precursor to today's farmers markets. And uh, so I just I just always had it you know in me to to farm. I think I think part of it is just the sense of uh, fulfillment, satisfaction, and security of being surrounded by abundance and embedded in the provision of of nature. My first connection to uh, permaculture uh, was through Mother Earth News magazine, which of course was kind of the mouthpiece of the whole back-to-the-land uh, movement of the early 1970s when uh, John Shuttleworth was still at the helm there. And they did, every month, they did a what they called a plowboy interview. They picked one true pioneer, leader, mover, shaker <laughs> in, the, uh, you know, in, in the alternative thinking uh, movement. And, um, and one of those interviews was, was with Bill Mo Mollison, uh -huh. And uh, he and uh, that was in the early 1970s, and I remember just like yesterday reading that interview, clipping it, and saying, you know, this is. And I was just, you know, I was just a teenager, but uh, I remember the the tremendous impact it had on me, uh, and and said, well, this this is this is the way to go. It's interesting, isn't it? And I, I love that uh, the story of the Plowboy interview. <laughs> um, yes. But it's interesting how that, that one thing can really, uh, it, it just rings the bell of, uh, at the right time. So Yes, well, I, w I was certainly ready for it. And when he mentioned things like, you know, like stacking and, uh, you know, the, the efficiency zones and um, you know, the, the, the pond building, uh, hydrology, you know, the, 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 the carbon, uh, you know, the carbon uh, cycling. I mean, our family was already... Uh, doing multi-speciation and um, and integrating open land with woodland, and uh, you know doing compost uh, limited at that time, not as big as today. But we were you know portable infrastructure, uh, portable animal shelter, uh, you know those kinds of things. It, we were we were um, you know. It was not totally new for us. I mean, the, the, the overall basic concepts, because my dad was quite a, a visionary and out of the box. But uh, it certainly helped to, you know, kind of articulate. Sometimes intuitively we know things are right, but it takes it takes somebody like that, a, a Dave Holmgren or a Bill Mollison, to to codify it and articulate it in a place where we can actually then take it to the marketplace of ideas uh -huh. and really uh, and really communicate it. Yeah. Yeah. So you've really, I mean, you've been at the, uh, at the, you know, at the sharp end really for, for, for quite a long time. And, um, this article, I mean, you, you, you know, you really stuck your neck out in quite a lot. And this article, as I said, talks about you wanting to lead America back to the farm. What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is that no civilization has ever so profoundly abdicated its visceral relationship with food and farming, like ours has, and and uh, this does not denote a new luxuriant uh, Star Trek existence. It denotes an incredible um, uh, disrespect 
for the cycles and the uh, and the realities of of living. Um, you know that we can so profoundly disconnect ourselves from this ecological umbilical is not a sign of progress. It's a sign of of uh, precipitous jumping off of a precarious slope. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so uh, I think I think that um, that in our in our culture we we need whether whether we actually participate in farming or we participate vicariously through knowing farmers, through attending farmers markets or or purchasing from buying clubs. Uh, the point is that a visceral relationship with the staff of life, uh, food, is is uh, fundamental for our for our existence, our understanding and our uh, economic, social and physical well being. You you cannot have an integrity food system, and by all that entails, from the soil all the way to the plate, you cannot have an integrity food system and have so little participation in that. It, 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 it can't, I, you know, I wish I could click my fingers and everybody could, uh, could you know, have integrity food while they spend their days, you know, plowing through uh, Hollywood celebrity culture, um, you know, uh, tabloids. But the fact is, uh, you know that is not the case, and so more of us, more people, have to develop this participatory relationship with the stuff of life. And this is, uh, I guess, the, the 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 thrust of your book, folks. This ain't normal. Yes, yes, it absolutely is. You know wh where we are today is is uh, abnormal throughout history. I mean, at no time in history has a civilization routinely eat food that you can't pronounce. Um, <laughs> eating food that you can't that you can't make in your kitchen, eating food that travels fifteen hundred miles and sees more of the world than the farmer that grew it. Uh, at no time in history have we ever been able, uh, even logistically able, to confine animals in large confinement animal feeding operations. Uh, you know, with draft power, you simply couldn't assemble enough food and distribute the manure. Uh, to a you know far enough and wide enough to make something like that happen. Uh, not to mention you know pharmaceuticals that uh, keep the animals healthy. So um, you know at no time have we been able so profoundly to um, to eliminate the carbon cycle in building soil. Uh, you know before now it always required a perennial uh, a perennial what you know rotation between annuals uh, in order to build the soil between the extractive time of tillage and annuals today uh, you know with chemistry chemical agriculture we just use soil as an inert substance that we just put a, a chemical IV in and um, and and grow plants and um, you know these are these are just such profound historical abnormalities that um, that you know we're, we're starting to see those chickens come home to roost in, yep. in uh, you know yep. wellness issues, uh, chronic illness, soil depletion, uh, you know water depletion, air quality, uh, you know in energy expense, energy expense and and, and nutrient uh, deficiency in foods and all this pathogenicity, toxicity, and a host of other maladies as as ecology's profit and loss statement uh, starts to starts to come true. So do you, do you see the seeds of this uh, change happening? What's your vision for the future? Do you see, uh, are you optimistic? Do you see the seeds happening, the, the change happening? Well, uh, well the, one, the one thing that I don't do is prophesy. I'm not a prophet. <laughs> so I, I actually don't know. Um, I, I don't know and don't surmise, you know, where we're going. Uh, you know, we, we, may, we may implode. Uh, we may not. I am perfectly happy to answer where I think we should go. Yeah. But uh, I'm not at all ready to say, "Wow, you know, one day everybody's going to wake up and and smell the humus, and we're all going to be, you know, happily ever after." Because I do see a tremendous uh, pressure from the global, um, you know, the global ag business and and food community, pharmaceutical community. 
uh, you know, the pressure to, for example, get the EU to adopt uh, genetically modified organisms. Um, you know, the just just uh, Great Britain's response to the to um, hoof and mouth disease. You know, when Sir Albert Howard, their own uh, knighted researcher, in the 1940s showed that hoof and mouth disease is strictly a uh, you know a dietary uh, a dietary deficiency. Uh huh. Um, you know, and and then and then uh, Great Britain was willing to to shut down their entire tourist industry basically for the stench of annihilation. You know, when I when I see disease, I don't assume that I'm not killing enough animals or that I'm pharmaceutically uh, disadvantaged. When I see disease, I look in internally and say, "What have I done yep. to compromise the immunological terrain? What can I learn from this? What's nature teaching me about?" About health and wellness. Where have I, uh, wh- where have I uh, uh, overridden the immunological barrier in, in terrain? You know, we're back to the Frenchman, you know, uh, Antoine Bichamp, uh, who was a contemporary of uh, of Louis Pasteur. But uh, it, the the point that I'm making is that um, while our side, the permaculture side, is rightfully gaining ground as more and more people um, do understand that uh, that we're on a wrong path um, while we've gained momentum in recent years uh, there is still plenty of momentum for um, you know for Monsanto of Hontas and Syngenta and plenty of people who don't share our biological view of, of food and farming and and instead see it all as a mechanical, uh, as a mechanical uh, situation. Yeah, absolutely. Joel, that's fabulous. Thank you so much. That's really inspiring uh, with all the work that you're doing. And um, keep going. I think, uh, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get there one way or the other. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much for the call, Mike. Thank you, Joel. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye. of America I think which is this land is your land and uh, saying that you wanted to lead America back to the farm so what got you interested in farming Joel and uh, and what's your connection to permaculture well I, I've been interested in farming ever since I can remember I'm second generation here on, on our farm my my so um, Hello, this is Joel Salatin, and uh, welcome, thanks for talking to us today on uh, International Permaculture Day. This is Mike Grenville from Transition Forest Row, and uh, Joel, you're a, a farmer, and um, I saw a video of you s- saying that you were a, a... Dad and mom were farmers, and my uh, grandfather always aspired to be a farmer. He had a large garden, but uh, from my earliest childhood memories, you know, I had... I had uh, laying chickens as a as a project throughout my teen years. Sold eggs, had a garden, and sold it on the the curve market, which is the precursor to today's farmers markets. And uh, so I just I just always had it you know in me to to farm. I think I think part of it is just the sense of uh, fulfillment, satisfaction, and security of being surrounded by abundance and embedded in the provision of of nature. My first connection to... Uh, you described yourself as a caretaker of creation. And um, I've seen you in a, a number of films, including uh, the very famous uh, Food Inc., which uh, was shown all over the place. And um, an article I read about you in uh, Time magazine just um, uh, a few months ago was very evocative. It just evoked the, the spirit 